Hello again and welcome back to Bantam Battles, small scale war games and RPGs with a small footprint. Robert Max here, this is log number seven, and in this episode we are going to take a look at Bugship, a micro chapbook RPG created by Noah Patterson, the very prolific and very generous Noah Patterson at micro RPG. I say very prolific because one look at his page at drive through RPG and you can see the man is a game creation machine. I say very generous because many of his games, including this one, are available on a pay-as-you-want basis, and even the prices that he is asking for his games is extremely reasonable, in my opinion. Now, um, this version of the game is what would be considered Edition Zero. I have recently purchased the basic edition rule book, which is version or edition 1.75. Um, it is a, a system rule book. I like what I see inside of this. Uh, there's a lot of world building. It's much more immersive than this basic game bug ship, but I'm refraining from covering the basic edition rule book because after being in conversation with Mr. Patterson through drive through RPG, he is releasing a deluxe version of this rule book sometime this summer, which promises to be even more immersive and have even more world building. And if you've watched any of my Four Against Darkness videos, you know how much I'm into world building. So I'm just going to cover this basic game. And when the uh, deluxe version, when the deluxe version is released later this year, I will purchase a physical copy and we'll dig deeper into the game system there. Now, this basic scenario or game, Bug Ship, is literally three pages of rules and the character sheet. Now, I printed the lowest ink version of the game, but, uh, you know, there are a couple other versions that come with it. Now, the first thing you'll do is... Well, first of all, what is Bug Ship? Well, Bug Ship is an ultra simple science fiction role playing game where you board a derelict spaceship infected with alien bugs. It can be played solo or with the traditional GM if you so wish. This game is based on the extremely popular grim dark fantasy micro chapbook RPG system. And I would add inspired by the Alien franchise. So the first thing you do in this game is, of course, create your character. For uh, saving time's sake, I have already done that. The first thing you do is roll for your credits. Believe it or not, I honestly rolled a 12, two natural sixes, so I started out with 12 credits. I've named my character in honor of Alien, Rex Ripley. His rank is command and you know maybe a better name for that would be department or division but no biggie uh, the four choices you have for that are security engineering science and command now that seems to be borrowing from another very popular science fiction franchise and i have no problem with that okay so then you select your class your options are Soldier, Ranger, Tech, or Diplomat. And I chose Ranger. Now, selecting Calm... Well, actually, let me get to the stats first. Uh, you have four stats in this game. Strength, Dexterity, Wits, and Charisma. You have seven stat points to divide amongst them. No stat can have a greater than four or a less than one. I chose a three for Strength, a two for Dexterity a 1 for Wits, and a 1 for Charisma. But because of the rank of Rex being Command, he gets a plus 1 on Charisma. That takes that up to a 2. Now, being a Ranger, that makes him proficient in Dexterity. 
And what that means in this game is when you make a dexterity check, you roll two d6s and get to pick the better of the two results. Your goal, whenever you're doing any stat checks, is to score your stat number or lower. I also purchased some weapons. I purchased a phaser, which is my ranged weapon, which deals out 1d3 plus 1 damage. And my melee weapon is a hand axe, which also deals out 1d3 plus 1 damage. Now, down here at the bottom, you have some other stats, Will, Health, and Credits. I'll get to them after I talk about the armor. I purchased a Personal Force Field, and what that does is increases Will and Health by 6 points. And I also purchased a Stim Kit, which can increase Health by 1d6, so if my Health uh, gets low, I can use this stim kit and uh, increase my health by six points. Now, your will is determined by adding your wits and charisma together plus 20. That would be 23. As you can see, I have a 29 here. That's because the personal force field increases will by six points. And health is strength plus dexterity plus 20. And once again, that would be a 25 plus the six gives you a 31. So the first thing you're going to do in this game is to roll for your first room. And that's going to be our starting room. And you roll 1d6 to determine how many squares are in that room, and we get three. So I'm going to draw three squares here. Okay. And the next thing you will determine the room type. And once again, 1d6. And we roll the 1. And it says the room is in darkness. The room is dark, plus 1 on dexterity and strength rolls. So I'm going to mark a D in here. And I'm also going to call this our uh, first room. Oh, and another thing I didn't mention, the goal of this game is to defeat the boss, of course, and the boss is the Bug Queen, and it will not, or she will not appear until you've encountered all the other aliens at least once. Additionally, she will only appear in the Hive Chamber or Queen's Nest. So those are two types of rooms you can roll for. If you roll her when she can't appear, re-roll. Once she is defeated, the game ends. So our goal is to clear this derelict ship of any bugs and then defeat the bo boss which is the bug queen okay so after rolling the type of room or the room size and the type of room we'll roll another d6 to determine how many doors actually it's not a d6 it's a d3 and we get a four so that's two doors i'm going to place one here and one here All right, so the next thing after making the room determination, we have to roll for any aliens. Once again, D6, we roll a four, and we get a bug guard. So I'm going to write bug guard over here, or just guard. And now we roll for the number of bug guards in the room. It can have a max of four. And we roll a six, which will give us our max of four. So I'm going to just put four little circles here. And the bug guard has a life factor of five. So we need five hit points to eliminate each one of these bug guards. Now, the bug guards also deal out uh, health damage and wits damage excuse me, wits damage, and we'll get into that once we get into this combat now. <clears throat> excuse me. So, the first thing you do when you're conducting combat is roll the bravery check, and a bravery check is determined by rolling a d6, and you have to make a charisma check. 
If you pass, you gain one will. If you fail, you lose one will according to the alien's will damage. If your will is ever zero, all rolls take a plus one modifier. A roll of one, I, and I forgot to mention this, a roll of one always succeeds in this game, and a roll of six is always a failure. That's a natural one and a natural six. Okay, so we have four bug guards, and we're going to roll for bravery. That's a charisma check. Now remember, in this room, because it's dark, all... Um, Dexterity and strength rolls are going to get a plus one. So charisma check. We roll a one, which is always a success. So we gain one will. That takes us up to 30. Now we would conduct ranged combat, but you can only do that if the room is four squares or greater. So that's NA. So next we do our melee combat. That is a strength check. Remember, strength rolls in this dark room are a plus one. We roll a two. And with the plus one, that's a three, so that's still a success. So now we roll damage based on our melee weapon, which is a 1d3 plus one. And we roll a one. So that's two damage. So we've two damage to the first bug guard. Takes him down to a three. And then you go through the process again. You do a charisma check. We fail the charisma check. Or excuse me, the bravery check. So when you fail the bravery check, you take will damage based on the monster's will. We roll a five. And the bug guard will damage is a 1d3 plus one. That would be a three plus one or a four. So we're down to 26 on the will. Range combat is NA. So now we roll a strength check for melee combat. We roll a three, that's a failure. So we roll on the monsters, or in this case the aliens health damage which for a bug guard is also a 1d3 plus 1. We roll a 1, plus 1 is a 2, so we take a 2 damage to our health, takes us down to a 29. And you go through the process again. Bravery check, we pass that. So we gain one will back. And we are up to 27. Now we do the melee attack by doing a strength check. Roll a five and fail that. Once again, I'm gonna take health damage. And that is a roll of a three. So that would be two plus one, which is three. Takes our health down to 26. And go through the process again. Do a charisma check for bravery. We fail that, so we do a will damage, we roll a 5, that's a 3 on a d3, plus 1 is 4, and our will is down to 23. You know, Mr. Patterson mentions in some of the rules that um, expect to die and die off, and this is definitely a grim dark game, and I've played several of these scenarios before, and... It is a tough game. So, once again, a charisma check. Or, excuse me, the, I guess we're at the uh, combat. We fail. And we take a 1 plus 1 damage to health. And that's a 24. And go through the process again. Fail the charisma check or the bravery check. And we take a three plus one damage to will. Takes us down to a 19. Now we 
do the strike chuck. We pass that. And you deal out three plus one or four damage. So the first one's eliminated and one hit to the second one. And this would go back and forth like this until either all of the monsters are cleared from the room or your health is down to zero. And if you clear the room, you would do a roll for loot and add that to your credits. So I'm going to stop the video here to keep it short. I will continue playing this game and then I'll be back sometime in the near future to let you know how it turns out. Until then, take care.